Uh, from my talk called Kaizen for Coders. Um, Kaizen, like all the best words, is Japanese, uh, and it means continuous improvement through small changes, but in two syllables. Um, and it was a concept that, like most of these Japanese words that we use, like Kanban and whatever, comes from Japanese manufacturing, and Toyota invented it. And so there's another Japanese uh, word which comes from Zen Buddhism, and that's sh uh, Shoshin, uh, which means beginner's mind. And that suggests that you should approach every new uh, piece of work with no preconceptions and no idea that you already know everything. Okay? And the third, this is sort of an intro to why I'm doing this talk. There's something called the Dunning-Kruger effect, and this is David Dunning and Justin Kruger. And the Dunning-Kruger effect is when someone is so bad at something that they are unable to recognize how bad they are, and they actually think they're really good, and they think people who are really good are shit. And I live in a constant state of fear that that's me. Um, so I, I am trying to improve all the time. And when you're trying to improve, the first thing you need to learn is your tools. Before this carpenter can learn all about the different types of wood and all the different tools and all the different things that uh, they do, whether they shave well, whether they uh, sand well, he needs to learn how to use these basic tools. So try and learn something new every day. This is learnsomethingeveryday.co.uk. There's pictures for every single day dating back about two years. But every day, just try and learn a keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio or your code productivity plugin of choice. Just set yourself the task of when you're going to use the mouse to do something, go, hang on, I'm going to learn the keyboard shortcut for that. Make a note of what you learn. Tweet about it. Learn your language that you use properly, okay? Just take some time, once a week or whatever, and look up some of these weird keywords that there are in c -sharp, like volatile and stack alloc and fixed, because you get through your protected and private and all this sort of stuff. There's loads of things in there that you don't know about, and sometimes it solves the problem that you want. Also, you should always, always be learning a new language. That's my personal belief, but, you know, quite a lot of people believe that. Uh, JavaScript is very big on there, and it's very important to learn JavaScript at the moment, but learn a functional language, learn a dynamic language, learn a concurrent language. All these things, even if you don't use the language, can improve the way you write your code. This is the framework, uh, .NET Framework 4 poster. You can download it, you can print it off very big, you can go to the printers and get them to print it as a big poster for you, and just look through that. There's loads of namespaces, some of which you will never have used in a using statement. So take some time to go into the uh, MSDN and find out what's in that namespace. And look at other frameworks as well. There's all sorts of frameworks out there. Some of them on .NET, some of them on other languages, and they've got different ways of doing things. So you've got Nancy FX, which I was talking about earlier on, and Open Raster, and you've got CouchDB, and all these different things, all new ways of doing stuff. And again, you can either integrate these into your work, or you can just use it to inform the way that you use your existing tools. Possibly the most important part of this entire presentation, read books, okay? Buy books. And when you've bought the books, you have to read them, okay? It's not enough just to order books continuously from Amazon, download them onto your Kindle, or put them in a big pile. You're not going to learn from them by keeping them in a stack by your bed. Has someone been fucking with my slide yet? <laughs> You're not going to learn anything by putting them in a big pile by your bed and just hoping it'll be absorbed by osmosis overnight. Um, so, yes, this, this is a book. <laughs> but there are other books, okay? So they, they, these are some books that I think everybody should read. Uh, the Pragmatic Programmer, uh, that's just the fundamentals. That's how to be a good programmer. Clean code, design patterns. Uh, JavaScript, the good part, is only about that thick. It's definitely worth reading. Zen and the Art of Most Local Maintenance is all about quality. It's a fantastic book. You should read that. And read sci-fi. Read cyberpunk stuff that's about computers because it gives you an idea of what's going to happen in the future. Read blogs, okay? There are dozens and dozens of .NET blogs out there. There's people blogging about Ruby and frameworks and all this sort of stuff. And you should have a huge stack of .NET blogs in your Google Reader setup or in your RSS reader of choice because there's all sorts of exciting things going on and these guys are all blogging about it. And then once you've been reading blogs for a while, write a blog, okay? This is a great way to cement your learning. If you can actually learn something to the point where you can write an informed blog post about it that people want to read, then that is a great way of making sure you've cemented that knowledge in your head. Okay, and with Twitter, you can tweet about it, and it'll get picked up, you put the hashtags on. Listen to podcasts, okay? This guy, quite clearly, is listening to Hansel Minutes. <laughs> you can tell. It's, it's definitely not this developer's life. 
Um, but no, you could, if you have a train ride or a drive into work, I'm guessing that a lot of you guys might drive to work because we're outside of the London area, you can hook your iPod up and listen to a podcast on the way into work. Read code, okay? Read other people's code. Do it through code reviews in the place where you work. Just go and immerse yourself in the code that other people have written and look at the ways that they approach certain problems. They might have a different way of doing loops. They might have a different approach to caching than you do. And you can go to open source sites like GitHub and Bitbucket and all these different sites and you can download open source projects written by some very clever people. When I was learning F Sharp, I downloaded the VS Bin source code, which uh, Jared Parr wrote. The whole thing's written in F Sharp. I learned more about F Sharp from reading that code than I did from all the books and the videos that I watched all put together. And then once you've been reading that code for a while, why not start contributing to some of these open source projects? Things like uh, Mercurial and uh, Git make it very, very easy for you to make a fork of the code and make some changes to it. And then you just say, can you pull my change into your code base? And then you feel like you've done something and you've applied some knowledge that you might not have a chance to apply in your day job. And finally, you have to be prepared to invest some money in this process, okay? You are a commodity and you need to make sure that you maintain yourself as a commodity. And that involves spending some money. And that might just be spending a small amount of money on books. But if you can afford it, if you can find some way to budget for it, go to training events, go to paid events like NDC, that sort of thing. And if you're not prepared to do any of these things, then other jobs are available. And please stop mucking up the water and the ecosystem for those of us who do want to be professional and want to do the best job that we can and be basically awesome. And that's me. Thank you very much.